Welcome to St Andrew's Easter celebration. We would usually do this uh, in the MPH and have an Easter service, but we can't do that this year, no. amongst everything else that we can't do thanks to coronavirus. And, but we still need to celebrate Easter together. So we thought we'd put together Mr. Shaki and I this video and you might watch this at home, wherever you are, whatever time of day it might be, perhaps sit down as a family together and Perhaps do it on uh, Easter Sunday would be an awesome time to do it. That would be awesome. Yeah. And we will have some crafting, what we're doing, a song, and even some food. Some, some baking. So you could push pause and uh, make that same recipe and then press play again, or however you want to do it. We just hope that you enjoy this way of celebrating Easter this year. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Shack, would you like to explain the theme that we're exploring? Yeah, so this year, um, we've come to the idea of looking at God's great love for us. Um, Easter, we look at it from different angles. Um, I know that for myself, Easter, when I think of it, my brain doesn't automatically go towards it being about God's love, but more about God's sacrifice and God's forgiveness of us. Uh, and so it's been really helpful for myself to consider just how it is a real showing of love. When you think of Easter, Pastor Nathan, what pops into your mind? Mind has sort of forgiveness and sacrifice. What comes, as you look forward to Easter each year, yes. what's sitting in the forefront of your mind? Chocolate. Chocolate. Always chocolate. Yeah. Big Easter bunny, big hollow inside. The bigger the better, basically. Yes. And and you you snap the ears off? Eating the ears first. No, just straight in the mouth. Straight in the mouth of the ears. Yeah. 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 So, but with this idea of love then, um, how is it perhaps that you feel love or do you know anything about that whole thing of love languages? What, what do you reckon is your love language? Yeah, look, my love language is, is words of affirmation. So I just love words. I love when people tell me positive, wonderful things. That you're appreciated. And I'm appreciated. It really yeah. makes me feel loved. And I also feel loved when um, I have physical touch, you know, hugs and cuddles and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, that's how I know that I, uh, I'm loved. Loved and cared for. What, if, what about you? Yeah. Um, Probably the same. I was lucky enough to have a birthday celebration a week ago yeah. and all my immediate family members, my children and my wife, they all did individual cards for me. Yeah. Uh, and it's really affirming and makes me feel mm. loved and cared for when I read uh, the beautiful messages written within those cards. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that mine is also words of affirmation. Yeah, um, yeah that, that's my love language. I love it you know, when I people appreciate what I've, what I've done or just who I am. Yep. yep. And I guess today we're just contemplating how it is that Jesus has loved us. Yep. So he can't touch us in the usual way, I suppose, and he, he can't, I guess he does write us messages, but in regards to Easter, how, how has he shown his love for us? And I think the answer would be that he died for us and went to the yes. cross. And um, many of you would know that there's, you know, this terrible, sad part in Easter, that's the first part, and Jesus dies, but there's this wonderful, happy part where you know, he came, comes back to life. Mm -hmm. I would say Jesus loved us through what he did. Yep, uh, just to die through his actions. Come back to life of all things. Yes, yeah. yep. And we've actually got a little video now from uh, a group of publications by Crossroad Kids, and we use God's Story videos fairly regularly in junior school to convey stories about Moses or Abraham or whoever. Uh, and this year for chapels, we're doing God's story as well. So we'd like uh, everyone to take in God's story, Easter. God's story, Easter. So part of God's story is about Easter and it begins like this. You might know Easter as the Sunday a ginormous bunny hides chocolate inside plastic eggs. But Easter is really all about how much Jesus loves us and how God sent him to rescue us. Remember how the Jews, God's special family were waiting for a king to come rescue them? Well, Jesus was the king, and this rescue was the whole reason he came to earth. God had already rescued the Jews once before, but this time it was going to include everyone. So one night, Jesus told his friends about the rescue. Exciting, right? But talking about this rescue was sad. That's because Jesus was going to rescue the world by dying. Kids, every mean or bad thing we do deserves punishment. By dying, Jesus took our punishment. Lots of things in life have good parts and bad parts. And just like candy bars are mostly good, as long as you brush your teeth after you eat one, this story is a really good one. Anyway, 
talking about the rescue made Jesus sad since he didn't really want to die. Thankfully, we can talk to God when we're sad, so Jesus took a few friends into a garden to pray. In the garden, a guy named Judas, who people thought was Jesus' friend, came with some people to help arrest Jesus. Peter, one of Jesus' true friends, was so mad he cut off a servant's ear with his sword. But Jesus didn't want his friends to hurt others, so Jesus healed the ear and let them arrest him. Then Jesus was taken to trial. One of the most powerful men in the city, Pontius Pilate, wanted to let Jesus go. But many of the people wanted Jesus to die. They didn't believe he was the Son of God or any kind of king. Even after all the miracles Jesus did, like healing sick people and making blind people see, they didn't believe in him. The people were so mad, they started yelling, kill him! So Pontius Pilate let the soldiers take Jesus. The soldiers made fun of the idea that Jesus was a king. They put a crown of thorns on his head and nailed him to a cross. Many people watched, but not all of them wanted Jesus to die. His mother and close friends were there too. Just imagine how they must have felt. Once Jesus was up on the cross, the sun stopped shining for three whole hours in the middle of the day. But those soldiers kept right on making fun of him. They said, if you're really God's son, why don't you just call on some angels to save you? Jesus could have called on angels to save him, but he loved us so much that he wanted to rescue us. So instead, he prayed to God, Father, I place my life into your hands. At that moment, Jesus died. And when he died, the soldiers who had just killed him realized he really was the Son of God. Later, Jesus was put into a tomb and a big rock blocked the entrance. Jesus' friends thought that was the end. But three days later, God sent an angel to roll the stone away. Don't worry, Jesus could get out on his own. The angel moved the rock so everybody else could see the tomb was empty. Jesus' friends were the first to stop by the tomb. The angel said, He has risen! Which is another way of saying, Jesus is alive! Nobody could believe it! Jesus took our punishment and then proved He really is the Son of God by coming back to life! Now, if we choose to follow Jesus, God forgives us for all the wrong things we do because Jesus already took our punishment. And that's the story of Easter. I always really enjoy uh, God's story videos. They bring messages to us from the Bible in, in ways that help us understand new things about God and how he's at work. Pastor Nathan, what did perhaps hit you as you watched that clip about Easter today? The angry mob, I'm not sure why, but just the crowd of people that wanted Jesus to die. I just, he's such a good person, like, why would they do that? I yeah. just, it just struck me for some reason. Yeah. yeah, it's not something that we normally think about, that we just see him as being this really beautiful example of love. Yeah, that's it. It's a really odd. Yeah, what about um, you? What yeah. did you? Um, as I watched it, I was struck by how difficult and hard and challenging it was for Jesus to go through with what he did, mm. to give up his life, mm. because you know we knew he knew he was going to die, mm. uh, and it wouldn't have been easy when he was in the garden and praying there. It was shown in the clip, it was, um, showing just how difficult it was for him. That's what struck me. Yeah, um, but he went through with it. Like he was able to follow through with it, which is just so good for us, yeah. because then we see how great um, God's love for us. So, how is. much does Jesus love us, Mr. Jackie? Yeah, is it this much. Is it this much? Is it that much? It actually goes right out, doesn't it? <laughs> right like that. Yeah, yeah to the cross. Like yeah, that. to the cross. Yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of God's love, uh, we have a memory verse. It's one of the most famous verses in the Bible about God's love. It's from John 3.16. And rather than us tell you all about it, we've actually asked Pastor Andrew, who's the congregational pastor here at the St. Andrew's Community, uh, to guide you in it. He's going to do sign language and... Uh, like you do at um, community worship time. Yeah, if you come worship to community worship service, yep. it would be just like that. So over you, Pastor Andrew. Hi, everybody. You might remember me. My name is Pastor Andrew. I'm the pastor from here of the congregation at St. Andrews. And Pastor Nathan and Mr. Shackey have asked me to come and give to you a verse of the week for your Easter service. For those of you who have been to our community services, you might remember that this is something I do as part of them. 
Our key verse for today, with the first half of the verse, is John chapter 3, verse 16. This is a really well-known verse from the Bible, as it talks about how much God loves us. So a lot of people say that this is the verse that talks about the whole Bible story, just in a very short bit. So let's have a look at the first half of John chapter 3, verse 16. It starts like this. God. And God is very easy as a sign. God. God. God loved. And the sign for love, there's some of these signs that are really cool and I love this one. It's just like that, loved. So it's going out from your heart. Loved. Loved. So we've got God loved. World. What do you think world might be? If you tried this, well done. World. Nice and simple world. So God loved the world. So like this. God loved the world so much. Pretty easy one again. So much. So much. God loved the world so much that he, now he's the sign for he and she and it are all the same and it's just like that. He, he. God loved the world so much that he, and the sign for gave is a nice easy one. It's like you've got a gift and you're giving it to someone gave, gave. God loved the world so much that he gave, his is the same as he, his, so he gave his one, what do you think one might be? (laughs) Well done if you got it, one, his one. So he gave his one And the sign for only, a little bit different, put this hand up like that, your left hand, your right hand, put the finger up behind it, and then you go, only, only, only. He gave his one and only. The sign for son, bit tricky, because this is one we don't have a sign for, so we've got a finger speller, and it goes like this. Son is S O. N. And try that with me. S O N, son. S O N. He gave his one and only son. All right, what do you reckon? Should we try it from the start? Let's do it together straight through. You ready? Do it with me. God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son. All right, let's try it now one more time. I reckon this is the tricky bit when you can't say anything, that's the really hard bit. So you ready to do it with me? Let's have a go. Excellent. Well done. Thank you. God bless. Have a great Easter. How'd you go with the memory verse uh, the Pastor Andrew let us in? Yeah, I think I've got you covered with that, Pastor Nathan. You're a bit, uh, <laughs> you're a bit awkward with trying to get all your little bits out at the right time. <laughs> it is an awesome verse to remember, though. Uh, John 3.16. We only did the first half of it, but mm. when you put the first half and the second half, yeah. it actually brings together the whole message of the Bible, where it starts in the Old Testament, pointing towards what God's going to do through Jesus. And of course, in the New Testament, um, expands on that for us. And if you're ever going to remember a Bible verse, John 3.16 is certainly the verse. Yeah. Well, it's not so much what we're talking about now. Uh, We have been investigating together as uh, God's God's greatest love for us. Uh, But it's not really in the same league, I suppose, but I definitely do appreciate and do love myself eating some yummy food and there's lots going around this time of year so uh, it might is. be hot cross buns it might be chocolate eggs well the year nines in home economics before school went out for holidays they actually were busy cooking themselves some easter muffins easter muffins and yeah. uh, i have to say there is a secret surprise inside and uh that i'll let uh, we'll, the roll, video. we'll roll the tape and you can have a look at what they did. And if you like it, you might want to make it yourself. Cool. Here it is. Uh, Easter muffin oh, uh, yeah. recipe. Oh yeah. And there are all the ingredients prepared. Young Connor going hard with his sifting. Go. Get that flour sorted.
They're the goodies, mate. Right Caramello. touch that really connects it in with Easter, of course. Where'd the fourth one go? Did you eat that? I did get one. I, I, I don't know whether I had it then or that, not. That yeah, maybe that's, maybe that's one sure there was three. Four. <laughs> there was only three. <laughs> My family uh, really actually enjoys making muffins, so I reckon that could be something that we would get into in these next couple of weeks. There's plenty of baking going on, but uh, I reckon Pastor Nathan, you have something else we might be able to do too to help us connect in with the, the awesome love that is ours at Easter time. Thanks Mr Shanky, we are all stuck at home and there's a really wonderful easy craft to be that you can do at home. All you need is a block of old wood, a hammer and some nails and um, you should be able to do some string art. I'll show you how. Yep. Um, or I'll, I'll attempt in what you see next of showing you how to put together uh, this craft activity called the cross equals love. Welcome to the workshop. Here we are. Uh, you've got the cross equals love uh, sheet and I'm sticking it on top of a bit of plywood I have here. And that's your first step. Next step is grab yourself some nails, I've got these size galvanised nails, you can use whatever you have lying around uh, with your parents' permission. Grab a hammer and get started. Your first nail will just be to stick that paper somewhere. I'm going to go for this corner of the cross. Uh, watch your fingers. When you're doing this at home, nail it in somewhere and I'm going to do that for all the corners of this cross and basically we just need to repeat this process multiple times, putting in a nail uh, about one centimetre apart on each of the outlines. And I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Let's give it a go. you've done the nails and completed that step, this is the fun part, just rip off that paper. We need to get some wool and we'll guide the wool around. We'll start tie a knot in one place. Um, let's find some colours. Make sure you've got all these before you make a start. We need a colour for the, we might do the heart first, pink's a good colour for this. And what you do is we'll just do a tie on. 
on one of the pieces, one of the nails. Doesn't have to be sophisticated. And you just wrap and wrap and wrap around whatever you want to wrap around. Once you feel like you've done enough, you just need to cut off the string. Um, I might get my assistant to get me some scissors and do another tie up. the final product, uh, cross equals love. I enjoyed making mine, I hope that you enjoyed making yours. It uh, doesn't matter if yours looks slightly different to mine, uh, it's just the process and the joy of making something. And as we go along through our time, we're nearly, nearly finished, but we have over the years, the last couple of years we've had a young man, um, Dan Warlow, come and share with Junior School in praise time for a chapel, yes. chapel session. And he has all these songs that we've been fortunate enough to download. And one of those songs is, that's how we know God loves us, which fits really well with what we're looking at today for Easter, God's great love for us. So pump up the volume. Yeah. Send it up at home. Sing along together. Sing along. Uh, and we'll catch you back at the end of the song. Well, we hope that you know how much God loves you this Easter. Uh, we've been exploring God's greatest love for us. It happens uh, through the very first Easter when Jesus died uh, for the sake of the world and uh, 
I hope you've enjoyed uh, chatting with me, Mr. Shaki, and uh, the evening celebrating at home too with your family. If you haven't yet done the craft or the activities or the, or the food or the Easter muffins, uh, give those a go. You can download the recipes and things and do it in your own time. Uh, we wish everyone a blessed and a wonderful Easter time, whatever you are, whatever you're doing, sorry, and wherever you are. Um, I've sort of said everything. What, yeah. <laughs> what would you like to say, Mr. Shaki? Yeah. Uh, just, I hope everybody stays safe and that we can spend some time at this time at Easter, reflecting on how much we really are loved and how important that love is needed, particularly at this time. Mm. So we'll throw over to uh, Mr. Shoemaker. He has a, a final word of blessing for all us in the junior school community of St Andrews. A special blessing for all of us here at Easter. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son in the world to die for us to save us from our sins. At Easter time, we remember that time when Jesus died on the cross. But more importantly, we remember the fact that he rose again from the dead three days afterwards. And we celebrate this event because we are now saved and we will join him in heaven one day. A special blessing to you and your family at this Easter time. May, you have, may God bless you at this time. Amen. Welcome to St Andrews College. <laughs> this will be an outtake. Okay. Yeah. Welcome to St Andrews at. <laughs> is that welcome back? Is it? Um, I don't know. So look, no. look at the camera. Like, what's my line? Yeah.